start up like this or like this and hit the start button to flip back and forth. You can make the important things big, keep the small stuff small and arrange it all around you. You can be all work, all play or even both at the same time. You can do it all simpler and easier on your Windows tablet, PC, or Surface. That's the new Windows. One experience for everything in your life. Hi, I'm Stacy. I'm a technical evangelist. Uh, with Microsoft in New York City and today I'm going to talk to you about marketing your application for um, the busy developer and we are going to focus on what it means to build a website or a promo site for your application or game and when you need to be doing that. So when it comes to marketing your application or game, uh, building a basic website can really help and we're going to talk a little bit today about why it can help and, and an easy way for you to get up and running and have a nice landing page uh, to drive all sorts of people to. Again, um, I'm Stacey Mulcahy and I'm a technical evangelist over at Microsoft in New York City and you can get a hold of me a variety of ways that are on this slide and we're just going to dive right in. So when it comes to your application or game, and someone searches for something along those lines in the store, let's say you, you build a game and it's, it's some kind of zombie runner and so people search for zombies because everyone loves zombies, um, they see this in the store. They see your item against everyone else's zombie hunter, zombie crusher, you know, zombie mix master, I don't know, 101 zombie names I could probably come up with. And so you got to figure out a way to kind of allow them to see actually what yours is and how it's different from everyone else's. And so a lot of people when they think about marketing and they think about how they're going to you know, push some awareness about their application or game, they tend to do it after they have a product and that's too late. You got to do it the minute that you've actually started. So you know, once you have an idea and once you have that concept, you've got to start early to build anticipation. You want to get people interested. You want to kind of even, for some ways, you want to kind of test out the waters, you know. A lot of people didn't realize that Dropbox, when it first started, it was just a video. It was all faked. And they just put it out there to gather interest and see if there was interest in that kind of a product. And as soon as it was, they knew that they had something successful. Now, you don't always want to, you know, share your ideas ahead of time necessarily. But, you know, you have something coming up. You're branding it, all the rest of it. You want to start early. So when it comes to building a website, you know, what, what a website or a basic landing page, and what I mean by website, I don't mean you have to go crazy. It can be a very simple one-page landing. Um, but what this does is it gives people like bloggers or your communities, whether it be your dev communities, whether it be your meetups, um, whether it be, you know, on your online communities as well. And it gives the press, you know, it gives them what they need. They can go to your site, they can get a very quick description, they might see like a, a demo video, they may get a couple of the features. And that gives them what they need to get either interested, perhaps they want to blog about it, perhaps they want to, you know, see if they can have a review or be on the beta list. Um, and so for that kind of community, you're giving them just the information that they need to do their job, which, you know, in turn is going to be doing your marketing job for you. It also gives potential um, customers uh, or future customers um, a sense of what's coming down the pipe and how you're going to handle that. And so it kind of tells them that, you know, here I am, here's what, here's what I'm planning on working on, and, you know, you can start to gather interest. Now, depending on when you have your website, whether you've launched it before, whether you know, you've launched it before and now it's after and you've already released your app, you're also targeting your current customers. And you're saying, you know, hey, I'm transparent. I'm, I'm kind of open and active. And, uh, you know, I want to take your feedback. I want to listen to what you have. Um, maybe I'm going to take some of the things you've said about me and also put it on the site. And so it kind of shows that, you know, you're engaging with your community and you're not just putting something out there and just, you know, crossing your fingers, hope it does well and never, you know, never look back. Kind of like, uh, what's that saying? Cool guys don't look back at explosions. You don't want to be a cool guy. You want to be the person who's definitely taking a look and noticing everything that's happening. So 
Building a site, a lot of people think, oh man, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and, and it really depends on the kind of person that you are. Some people, they have their unique branding and they spent a lot of time with the design and the UX and, and their site really needs to reflect that overall brand and as, as it always should, but you know, sometimes there's more effort needed um, than perhaps for others. And there's a couple of quick ways you can start you know, to build a site and a lot of people kind of forget these things. So, you know, using something like WordPress, which is a, a CMS, it allows you to kind of tailor the content. There's a ton of plugins for it. It's all open source. Um, and there's a lot of beautiful free themes and, you know, or paid for themes that you can buy that, you know, kind of give you a unique look and you can take those themes and also further customize them. So they're a really great starting point. You could get up and running with a, a very, you know, high fidelity website with WordPress, you know, in just a couple of hours quite easily. Um, you know, and once again, depending on how you want to host your website and where you want to host it, if you're not a person who has hosting or any of that kind of stuff, you also have options. And another option, for example, for hosting a site, even if it's a WordPress site, is Windows Azure. And it's really, really simple. You just go in, um, you sign up for an account, and, and once again, you know, you can get that account a variety of ways if you have BizSpark or other things. But, you know, just using Azure to go in and, and one-click install for WordPress and boom, you're done and then pick a theme and then just start filling out your content and you know once again you have a website in no time there's also you know other places you can look for this kind of thing and, and Squarespace is one that gives you really really beautiful um, designs for uh, all sorts of different kinds of of sites and applications and so you could easily use or leverage something like Squarespace to you know build a, a one-page site if you wanted to it might be a little bit of a you know uh, expenditure if you're going to just do it for a one page landing page but it's something to look into you know there's also uh, all sorts of blogging platforms like WordPress or blogger you can always go there and um, you know start something very simple and when people think about a blog they think about daily entries but you can also kind of tailor those to contain what you need so in that sense tumblr is also an option for you and Tumblr, again, is, is one of those social networks that you're going to be tying into a whole bunch of users already. And if you're very smart about how you tag your content, um, you know, you can set up a Tumblr and you can customize it so it actually has like little sections. So you could do everything that you need to do with your site in Tumblr if you needed to. And then you could also just kind of continue adding content, just little snippets to keep people interested in your Tumblr, and it could be screenshots. It could be um, a thought on a certain interaction. Um, you know, it could be uh, something else in someone else's tumble, uh, Tumblr and that you actually reblogged or, or whatnot, retumbled. So, you know, there's a bunch of options. These are just a couple. And, and when it's up to you, you know, you've got to figure out how you want to do it, how much you want to spend. But for most people, it really is about how quick it is. And there's tons of stuff to help you make sure that you're not going to be spending weeks and weeks on a site because you need to be spending weeks and weeks actually on the application or game. When it comes to a site, you've got to think about a couple things. And, and really, your landing page, it should almost be like a, a one-page press kit. It should tell everyone what they need to know. And, you know, when you start thinking about building a web page uh, for your a promotional web, you know, website for your application or game, you've got to think about it from a different perspective. You've got to step back a little bit. And one is going to be, are you going to be a publisher? Are you going to be a person who's publishing multiple apps or multiple games and they're all going to fall, you know, underneath your brand, for example? And so there's a lot of game studios, for example, that put out, or indie game studios, who put out a little, whole bunch of little titles um, under their names. Uh, there's a bunch of people who have a bunch of apps associated with them. And so if you think that you're going to be a publisher with you know, a whole bunch of games or, or applications under your name, it might be wise to set up almost like a publisher website where every page is going to, or you can add new pages for new applications or new games. Um, if it's one of those things where you think, oh, I'm just going to try this out and it's a one-off, just create it for that application or for that game and kind of give it its own presence. So when you're looking at what should be on the landing page, um, all these things kind of vary, but I kind of just mocked up in the roughest way just the basics of what you should probably have on the page. And so, you know, for your game, for your application, you should probably have some kind of an icon or some kind of a logo. And, you know, you want someone to identify with that right away. Now, when we look at a web page, 
or an application, anything visual on the screen, the first place most of us tend to look is going to be in the top left. And so your eye kind of does a whole uh, Z across the screen. And so the logo is going to be the most important thing and therefore it should be on the left. And if we move over across the screen, we're looking at, I've got a whole bunch of social icons. Now, again, I put them in the top right. You can put these wherever. This is not about placement. This is only about information. So the, these kind of items should be on the page, but where they are really can change. Um, social icons on, you know, on your landing page and making sure that you have social accounts. That's, now, that's a whole other session we'll cover. But, you know, having these social icons so people can quickly look at your tweets or can go to your Facebook page or, or any of those, you know, social networks that work for you um, could be out there. So, uh, Pinterest is, is very much a community of 30 to 40 year old women or maybe even, you know, younger than that. Um, you know, a lot of like recipes and weddings and stuff like that. It's a huge, huge, uh, hugely female oriented audience. A Pinterest uh, icon would totally make sense on an application that was targeting that type of user. So once again, when it comes to the social icons, just think about where those people are and which ones make sense for you. Um, a productivity app might have a LinkedIn icon, for example. I just threw some up there um, to give you a sense. So, you, you know, you want to have some social aspects to it. You want to have a sense of your logo. You want to have a big headline. Um, it can be the name of your app. It can give you a sense of what the app does. Maybe it's that one sentence mantra, um, you know, makes this easier, whatever it may be. Uh, and, and maybe a little bit of content because you want the person to just be able to look right at the top and right away understand what this application or game, you know, does or what type it is. Um, Often you'll see in these kind of sites, people have, uh, you know, an image of some sort, and it's usually of the device. So if you're, you know, if you're creating an app or a game that's like a mobile-only game, you know, you might actually have a screenshot of it on the device itself. Often you'll see that. Um, sometimes people have, if it's cross-device, and you might, you know, this might be for the Windows 8, it might be for Windows Phone, they'll have, you know, a monitor or a laptop and a device. Um, they might just have a screenshot, a big screenshot or a series of screenshots of the game or application, you know, rotating in a carousel or whatnot. Um, once again, this is not about design, it's just about the kind of things that you've got to consider that should be on the page. So usually something along those lines um, of your application or game being used in context or really lovely screenshots or art from your game um, right up top can help someone draw, uh, can help draw some interest from your users. Um, the other thing you normally get on a page like this is what we call a CTA, and a CTA is a call to action. And every page, whether you want to think about it or not, really does have a call to action. And it might be to get you to buy something, it might be to get you to subscribe to something, it might, you know, it might be simple and just gets you to engage longer and read more, right? So a call to action typically for a page like this is going to be, um, you know, a big glossy button that's, you know, pointing to where you can download or, or you know, where you can get or see the application in the store. Um, and so often, if you have an application or game that's on multiple platforms, you might have a button that's for iOS, you might have a button, you know, now available in the iOS store, now available in Google Play, now available in Windows. Um, but typically those are available. And if you do your website way ahead of time, you're not going to obviously have that same CTA, right? Um, so once again, this might reflect at which point you started your website and, and at which point you're going to have to maintain and update it. Um, another thing that a lot of people uh, include and, and which, you know, gives people a good sense of, uh, you know, what this application or game kind of offers and how it's different from others is features. Um, and so I just have, a, you know, a couple of boxes for features and sometimes they're icons with little descriptions. Whatever they are, just keep them really short and sweet. Keep them bulleted, like bullet points. Um, don't make someone work hard for it to figure out what the features are and make sure you word them in a way that really sells them. And so, you know, for features, don't list out 100 features. Just list out, you know, three or four of the top things that um, either, you know, draws to, to the sense that these are, this is also what the competition is doing, but also shows your unique value proposition and, and how you are different from the competition. And so for features, often that's, you know, quite, quite near the top because that's usually what people want to say. If they're like, oh, another note-taking app, they want to understand how this note-taking app is different. 
right? And so visually it might be different, but there's got to be something else for them as well to kind of draw them in. If you go further down the page, and once again, some of this stuff is not is giving you a sense of uh, information architecture or what should be on the page. Um, you know, sometimes you'll see people who uh, they'll take what's being said about their app. Um, sometimes it's called a testimonial. Sometimes they'll pull it from Twitter. Sometimes they'll you know pull it from a review. Um, it could be something that's from an article. Whatever they might go and take those items and they might just you know put them on the page as well to get a sense of like, here's what people are saying about my app. Because reviews has a really uh, profound impact on how we make our decisions uh, about what we want to pursue, use, buy, all the rest of it. And so reading these things, and if one is, you know, if someone says something that kind of um, resonates with me, I am more likely to go and actually get that application. So a lot of times people will start to do that, and that's one of those things where you don't have to wait till it's released. You know, if you have a little bit of uh, this buzz going on around your application or what's you know coming out, and people are talking about it, um, you know, and they're excited for its release or you know whatever it may be, you can start to list that stuff if you want to list it. Another thing that um, some some people put up is a, a sign up or kind of like a almost like an e you know email newsletter or you know sign up now to be on the beta. This is really handy if you're going to be putting your site up well ahead of time because it means that you can start to gather a whole bunch of names and users and they can start to become your beta testers. They can start to become the people you can kind of like throw ideas off of and um, you know play that whole feature game uh, which is basically like hey, you know, here's what I'm thinking are my top, what do you want for your top? You can start to build a community that way a little bit. Um, and often people, they see a lot of things. We consume so much information and sometimes it's hard to remember certain things. And so often people use those kind of sign up newsletters as like, oh, remind me, remind me when it's available. Like I'm interested in this, uh, I'm going to forget it tomorrow, I'm going to forget what I was surfing, but remind me. So something like that can be uh, pretty handy for you to build your user base. Um, all of the stuff that we just talked about, it's, it's what marketers like to call lead generation. And uh, what a horrible word. But, you know, it's that idea of figuring out who are the interested customers in your application and, and how can they kind of help you create a product that's going to be better. And so in order to do that, you need to be doing these things well at a time. Um, there's also free ways to advertise. So once you have your kind of your website up and running, um, you know, you, you now have the ability for people to kind of discover your application outside of the store. And, and that's one of the problems. A lot of people don't do a website or they don't use any of the social channels and they only rely on the search from the store once it's released. Um, you want people to be able to discover your application outside of an ecosystem that it's going to live in specifically. And so you want them to be able to, you know, go to Bing or go to Google or whatever and type in whatever they may type. And if it, you know, brings back to your, your application or game and it makes sense that you show up in those results. And one of the sure ways to do that is to, you know, have a website that you have up and running. And so having a website is about bringing uh, what most people do naturally within the store, which is search or maybe browse, and you're allowing them it, to do it um, outside of that ecosystem. So it's really important. When you go and you build your website, you've got to think about, um, you know, I also want to drive traffic to my site. And so you can drive traffic to your site through your social channels, whether it be Twitter or Facebook or any of those kind of things. It's also going to happen organically. People are going to search. And if you've, you know, really thought about your content and you've got the right words up there, you're going to start to show up in, in searches. Um, but you can also use um, uh, advertising and, and paid uh, kind of little um, ads drive people to your site. Now, everyone's like, okay, all right, I'm not spending a dollar on this. I'm cheap. I've already spent, you know, however much money to submit my app when I have to submit it. I'm not spending it on anything on advertising. And totally understand that. But, you know, there is a free way to advertise. And one of the free ways is if you sign up for uh, the webmaster tools for Bing, you get a $50 credit uh, with the Yahoo Advertising Network. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to go in and once again, whether it's on the Yahoo, whether you're doing Google, any of these things kind of work the same. You're kind of looking for keywords and you're buying ads uh, targeting those kind of keywords. 
And so, you know, here you go. You got a free $50 to go and play. You can figure out if your game is meant for kids and it's a learning educational game and here's the grades and all those kind of things. Do a little keyword research, figure out what it may be, and start using those, you know, $50 worth of free credits to see what happens. Um, the other thing that you've got to be really, really, uh, you know, prudent about when you do your website is to include some kind of analytics. You know, it doesn't really matter who you want to use. There's lots of free uh, open source analytics out there. But analytics will really tell you, for example, if you just went and used that free advertising, if it worked, because you'll start to see the referrers come in. Um, you want to see who's linking to you and how the traffic is, is getting, you know, is getting to your site. And it's also a way of, like, figuring out, okay, well, you know, if I have a video up there, and I have tracking, you know, put in place and I can see how long someone engaged with the video, you can start to, you know, measure interest a little bit more. So you want to make sure that you also have analytics in there and it'll help you kind of figure out, um, you know, what kind of things uh, keep traffic and, and what kind of things keep people interested. That's kind of all I got for, you know, building a basic website. It doesn't have to be something that takes you a week to do. Um, once again, it can, and, and uh, that I'm that type of person. I'd probably do everything custom and build it from scratch. But there's lots of tools out there that you can use to, you know, get up and running. Lots of them don't cost you a cent. And there's also other things that you can plug into to help start to drive some more organic traffic to your site, which and then in turn will drive actually to the downloads of your application. Um, that's all I got for this week. Thanks so much.